how a minister aborted the most ambitious grassroots sports development program in Nigeria's history. It is the eve of another Olympic game. And I invite the reader and the listener to join me and shed their own tears. Believe it or not, when Dr. Ebele Goodluck Jonathan, ECFR, was president of Nigeria, he approved the establishment of the Federal Government Committee with the singular mandate to revive academical sports in the country. That means sports at the grassroots, at secondary school's level, the natural feeder, the elite sports, in tertiary institutions, local government, states, and even the national sports councils and associations. The body was called Nigeria Academical Sports Committee, NASCOM. The Honorable Minister of Youth and Sports at the time inaugurated the committee whose membership included several stakeholders at the secondary school sports level across the country. I believe that my background as a product of school sports, as owner of the country's first multi-sports co-educational secondary school, as chairman of the governing council of the country's only national sports institute, and an active participant in the organization of secondary school sports in the country at the time, earned me the appointment of chairman. The president's mandate was simple. Set up the machinery to revive participation in sports in every secondary school in the country. For most members of the committee, particularly those that were instrumental to establishing it, their vision was small to organize a national football competition for secondary schools, name it after Mr. President, and get all state, state governors to direct their ministry of sports and of education to participate, have a grand finale in Abuja, and get Mr. President to attend. That was good, but limited in the scope of what could be achieved additionally with an expansion of the vision. I saw it as an opportunity to catalyze the biggest grassroots sports development program in Nigeria with multiple outcomes that will revolutionize sports, take its outcomes beyond academicals level, impact national youth engagement, youth empowerment, encourage enrollment into schools, particularly in the Boko Haram ravaged Northeast at the time, document all Nigeria's athletes, create a seamless transition from secondary to tertiary and onto professional levels in sports, and so on. After several months of consultations and conversations with the highest authorities in the country amongst the stakeholders to be involved in the project, and a draft document was scripted capturing the vision and all the details of strategy funding, implementation, outcomes, a SWOT analysis, and so on, it was clear that the president's simple and single mandate escalated and becomes an exciting trip into uncharted new territories in sports development that will change the lives of the youths for good all over the country. It was clear that the project, in order to succeed, needed a general clear understanding by everyone involved in the different parts with clear roles and responsibility. A code connecting all the moving parts in the complex architecture and a seamless relationship up the ladder of the production line from grassroots to the elite and then the professional ranks of sports. Areas that were outside the direct mandate of the committee. The weakest part of the project was the absence of legislation to give it teeth and a permanent life. The committee was ad hoc at best to survive at the whims of any new minister. Unfortunately, I was never a small dreamer. 
I saw beyond the superficial intention. I always dream big. With me as pilot, following consultations and meetings, the committee came up with a master plan for deployment to strategic institutions and organizations in the country, without whose buy-in and participation the project will not take off from the tarmac. At different fora, I led the committee to meet with the principals of all federal government secondary schools in the country, all state ministries of sports in the country, all state ministries of education in the country, directors of sports of all state sports councils, all local government sports councils, the Nigeria Governors Forum, all principals of all public and private secondary schools in Nigeria, directors of sports of tertiary institutions in Nigeria under NUGA for the university, NIPOGA for the polytechnics, NASEGA for the colleges of education, the committee of vice chancellors of universities. I met all these people, heads of all military schools in Nigeria, the directors of sports in the state's ministries of education, the leadership of the Nigeria School Sports Federation. They are the direct supervisors of academic sports in Nigeria, and so on. I met their representatives, all of them, and they were all consulted, they were briefed, and they were all integrated into the grand plan that they already embraced with relief that the president was going to be involved. The plan was to document all students, and indirectly, all students, well, to document all sports students, and indirectly, all students in all these institutions, the students that were interested in participating in any one or more of different sports in their institute. The documentation includes their names, full names, their home addresses, dates and places of birth, next of kin, the institution, the course of their study, their class, sports they were involved in, blood type, biometrics, and any other information that may be found useful for proper documentation. The data will be universally available and accessible to all the institutions and stakeholders in sports in the country. Meanwhile, each student athlete will be given a card, like an ATM card, that will serve several purposes. This card will be provided by a bank that partners with the committee and houses all student sports levies and details from the over 180 university, 420-something polytechnics and, and colleges of technology, hundreds of colleges of education, tens of thousands of secondary schools all over the country, and so on and so on. Every institute readily bought into this grand scheme. Funding was going to be simple and very easy. Beyond marketing, sponsorships and partnerships, every student in tertiary institutions paid and would pay an annual sports levy as they have been paying forever. And in the secondary school, levies used to exist until they were cancelled as a result of abuse by school heads. With proper legislation and control, Levies were to be revived and better monitored. So I leave everyone to work out the math of what those levies would have amounted to when domiciled in a partnering bank. Let me tell you, I approached only one bank with that proposal. The MD of one of the biggest banks in Nigeria, he listened to me in rapt attention until I finished my presentation. His response, remains etched in my mind to this day. He told me that every day of his life as MD, he received tons of proposals from organizations and people, big and small. 90% of them, he said, ended up in his dustbin. A small percentage attracted his attention and he would send those ones to responsible subordinates in the bank for their consideration. But there were a few, a very few, 
that attracted his full attention. Whenever he encountered one of those ones, he knew instantly. The proposal that I had brought to him was one of the best he had ever received. He said it was a winner. His bank would partner with NASCOM to actualize it and to demonstrate the bank's seriousness and commitment. Immediately, he invited one of his directors to join us and instructed him to pro proceed, process, and deliver one of the new cars the bank was using for promotions to the Secretariat of NAFCOM in Abuja without hesitation for the project. Within a few days, the committee of the bank had begun work. The bank's IT department created designs for the cards that were to serve as national student ID cards, insurance cards to cover accidents and injuries of all the sportsmen during sports events. They were to serve as basic ATM cards with a little amount of money already in the cards. They will register every sports person within the project from secondary school to any tertiary institution as a part of a welfare scheme that will sustain through their sports careers and even beyond. It was a project that was too good to be true. It was cruising along until very close to the London Olympic Games 2012. A new minister for youth and sports was appointed. By the time he was returning from the Olympics, he had his own ideas and projects. Unimpressed with NASCOM, not knowing anything about it, one of, his, one of his very first moves was to change the leadership and to install his own choice of members of the committee. Because the body just died a natural death. In one moment of ignorance, with the stroke of a pen, the minister aborted a heavily pregnant project, one of the most ambitious grassroots sports development projects in Nigeria's sports history. We are going to another Olympic. I am reminded 